I've never been to the esports arena here at the Lux. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I mean, it's super nice. Yeah, it's really cool here. But you know, the question is, were you alive when these games were first being played? No. <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, you know what's interesting yeah. about that is I think Super Turbo came out two months before I was born in the arcades. That's actually a fact. It was March, Man. March of '94. I'm like, trying to be joking about this, but it's actually. Serious. I'm dead serious. It's like March 3rd or 4th or something like that. It's very early in March that I saw it. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's really cool to see this match, and especially oh, yeah. I know a lot of people, they talk about keeping Marvel 3 alive, mm -hmm. a game that came out less than a decade ago, right? But now we have the old, old games, which are yeah. going to be really fantastic, and uh, two of the kind of legends of Street Fighter. Oh, yeah. And what the, what the cool thing about this is that, you know, th there's scenes actually keeping a lot of these games live already. Mm -hmm. The 30th anniversary just came out and lets us play all these other games. And so the three games that we're actually going to check out right now are going to be Alpha 2, Alpha 3, as well as Super Turbo. And the two guys that we're going to have play is going to be the two basically... Uh, Final contestants of the first B3 event. Oh my god, is that actually true? That yes, is. Yes, us grand finals of B3. That was in Alpha 2. And that, of course, is the champion of B3, Alex Vai, and the runner up, Mr. John Choi. Yeah, and what's crazy about that is John Choi was uh, breaking down backstage. He's like, you know, we didn't actually first play at B3. He was telling a story oh about yeah? how they had played like a year before that here at the Luxor. What? Wait, okay, that is new to me. That's news to me. So. Yeah, it was like the craziest story that I had ever heard. <laughs> All right, well, let's go ahead and meet our contestants here. Let's let's take a look at what Alex Vai has to offer us today. Oh, there he is, Mr. Cali Power himself. Man, he looks way too comfortable in Vegas. I got to say, <laughs> my man looks like he is cheesing ear to ear. He had quite a run in the Street Fighter Brackets this weekend, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the Young Bucks think they still have it. Alex Vai shows up and is like, look, you guys can't forget about me. Just because I'm running tournaments doesn't mean I don't know how to compete. <laughs> I mean, interesting enough, he's always practicing there all the time. Anyway, he's playing in his own tournament. But, you know, the guy that he's going to be doing up against, I haven't seen him play in a while, but, you know, he's still pretty good. He played this weekend as well. Let's meet Mr. John Choi. There he is, John Choi, the legend himself. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy to see these two playing each other in 2018, right? <laughs> I'm getting flashbacks here. I mean, look, here's the question right now. Is John Choi going to sit on the floor? Oh, is he going to hit the deck? Oh. He's 100% sitting on the floor, yeah. You see that? As soon as you said that, yeah. the big smile on his face, he was like, yes, I'm hitting the deck. And, you know, some people might even be wondering, why do old school players want to play on the floor? Oh, you got to see the stick he's playing on. Well, for one, yeah, he's using the Moss stick, and he has refused to ever adapt to anything new or modern at this point. Yeah. That he is the true old school guy. But also, you know, when we played on arcade cabinets, those sticks didn't move at all. You could just, like, slam it in every single direction. When you play it on your lap, the joystick kind of moves a little bit. So when you play on the floor, it's sturdy. Yeah, you can't move around and shake it. I, w I hope we can get a zoom on the monster. <laughs> Just so everybody can see, like, the beast that he's playing on. And, like, as a fact, I actually played John Joy at NCR oh, a yeah. few years ago in Street Fighter 4, and he played that game on a monster. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, like, the craziest thing. He hit the deck next to me, and I was like... Here we go. Yep, it's about to be a good match. That's how I knew. It's the true. I mean, we, these days we talk about like cement and parts and sound up. It's just like we've got perfect 360s. Yeah. You know, <laughs> concave, convex buttons or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And Maya was telling me about how like, he's like, yeah, you know, I can't play Tekken on a Japanese stick. He's like, I can only wave dash on a Moss stick. And I was like, that's the, <laughs> the oldest sentence I've ever heard in my life. You can only wave dash on an American stick? <laughs> and you know... The Moss stick, so the, the joysticks that we use these days, the joystick is very loose. Yeah, exactly. The Moss stick, it's like you're getting a workout every time yeah. you move that joystick. It is. It's a serious pain. And the buttons, you got to hit them with some heart. And, dude, you said you, said you played John Choi, right? Yeah. Have you heard him, like, when he does uppercuts, he's just like... Yeah, it's like five. It's like one-hit uppercut. It's he's like a firing a squad yeah. is going off, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you have yeah. to do it. I mean, uh, you know, parts in arcades are not always the most reliable, mm -hmm. to say the, the least. <laughs> you, you shouldn't trust them. <laughs> exactly. That's why we got so used to it. I mean, people watch me play on stream, and they think I'm mad because of how hard I hit the buttons. Right. It's just, that's just how we did it. They're know? like, this guy, James, is out here smashing his <laughs> stick. You're like, no, I, I was just making sure the button worked. <laughs> exactly. How do I know if it's going to – if I hit it harder, it does more damage. <laughs> That's just how it works. I just love the fact oh, that he's, he's he hit the deck. Yeah, he's sitting on the floor right now. 
going to be going against Alex Vai. And, of course, as we mentioned, you know, he's been keeping up with the, with the mindset of a fighting game player. Uh, he runs the Wednesday Night Fights, of course, mm -hmm. in the eSports Arena in Santa Ana, and he competes every week. Yeah, so it's not like he is a stranger, right? right. And they, they have ST tournaments each week at uh, WNF. Thanks to Miller Time and L Trouble for bringing out, lugging out the old CRTs, <laughs> bringing out the, uh, the the setups each and every week so that everybody can play ST and SoCal. He plays occasionally, especially when he, like, found out that he was going to play in this. And, like, yeah, they announced, like, yeah. the big, uh, you know, tournament this year, 30th anniversary, having a bunch of events that are right. going on all over. So he was like, I got to start playing. He actually was like, I got to start practicing some <laughs> ST. <laughs> he was like, yeah, I got to get back into it. I love the camera view that we had previous to this one, you know, wh when we're looking at Vi and Choi at the same time. Yeah. Choi looks absolutely tiny because he's sitting so far away. <laughs> yeah, but he is a big dude. This man's been hitting the gym. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Those Definitely. arms are l locked and loaded in that polo, I promise. He, he was one of the leaders of this fit FGC movement. Man. Yeah, he wasn't on social media bragging about it. <laughs> My man was just hitting the irons. He was too busy working out to tweet about it. Exactly. But yeah, they're going to play three games, and they're going to start mm -hmm. with Alpha 2, Street Fighter Alpha 2. Yeah. Then they're going to go to Street Fighter Alpha 3. Right. And then Super Turbo. And even if this one player wins the first two games, they're going to play all three of them. Because we want to see them play. Yeah, you want to see them all play. Yeah, right? I really, I, I can't wait for the ST match. In particular. Yeah. Like, I'm so <laughs> excited to see ST. And it's so funny. We're in the eSports arena in Luxor, mm -hmm. in Las Vegas, on the Strip. In 2018. In 2018, and they're going to, this beautiful display they have behind us and everything, right? These super nice lights, and then Alpha 2 and Alpha 3 and ST. Dude, are that's true. It's like, is it going to be like weird upscaled graphics? <laughs> yeah, uh, what's it going to, we got four <laughs> ST and 4K. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, it's, it's really cool to see that people are still celebrating. The things about this game, too, is that's really cool is that, you know, if you're someone like me who's much newer, when you watch mm -hmm. an old game like this, the cool thing about it is that, you start to figure things out pretty fast. Mm -hmm, you start mm -hmm. to be like, oh, this is just like this and that. And oh, this is yeah, all funny. Yeah. And it's funny that fighting games are, are really not that different. <laughs> they can be, but yeah, yeah. yeah. For the most part, the nice thing about it is that if you have that fighting game mindset, yeah. it's easy to jump between them. Exactly. Looks like we're jumping in the game here. Oh, oh boy. Oh, Rolento oh, Ken. Oh, he's going with the old school Rolento. Now, Ken, of course, super good because his alpha counter reaches super far. And Rolento, you know, just a. Oh, wow. oh, dizzy already? Dude, John, like, missed his jump in time. <laughs> yeah, he didn't get the combo off. <laughs> oh. oh, and he even did the wrong alpha counter. He was going to do the kick one. Unless he, wa and he knew it was close enough so it would knock down. But yeah. the kick alpha counter is the one that's always a problem. Oh, no, he went the wrong way. Bye was supposed to jump forward. Most of the time, uh, you can't get into the air activate uh, after you activate a custom combo, but Lorento has a command jump. Yeah, against the wall, right. So, well, not even just that. You can just down up, and he jumps really fast. You can do, like, oh, really? Off of the slide, <laughs> and then he just does, like, ridiculous amounts of damage. It's a grab here. Oh, yeah. Counter look at the damage. Yeah. Oh, oh, he missed it. Oh, man. Look, it's been a while, James. <laughs> so it's not air to air for Vi. Walk up. Oh, oh. trying to go walk up throw. But you know, one of the things that you notice, though, is that the damage is so high in this game. Yeah, that was game one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. They were thinking to themselves, yeah, they should play all three games because I was, uh, you know, I was like talking about it. I was like, you know, this is going to be the fastest mm -hmm. of all the exhibitions you watch. Uh, <laughs> these games are quick. Yeah. Yeah, blistering pace. One of the nice things, you know, in this game, too, I mean, we'll, we'll see a difference maybe if one of them goes with Vism. Oh, wow, Vi going with Vi. You, yeah. And you know what? Vi is the one that kind of invented a technique in this game called the Vi Custom Combo. Yeah, the Vi Custom Combo, right. You're going to activate a custom of the opponent standing, you can sweep them before they can crouch. And so yeah. there's this really dangerous Vixies tool in, in, with the Custom Combo as a result. Yeah, something. I mean, he is always so good at the Alpha games, right? That's one thing about Vi. So it's definitely his specialty. Oh, see, there it is. That, that kick out the counter. It reaches really far. Not that far, but it, it's always been one of the biggest problems. It was one of the very first things that people were crying was cheap. Yeah. <laughs> Missed upper cut from John on that jump in, too. You can tell you Twitter existed back then. Oh, yeah, you wouldn't <laughs> want to read it. <laughs> Would have been it can kick out the counter. Ugh. Yeah. Take on the air throw. Yeah, back into the wall here, of course. Firewall game is so important. You see both of them a little tense, right? Mm -hmm. To throw anything now. Yeah, it's because of the Vi CC. They crouch, they're crouching in anticipation that the other guy's trying to activate the custom combo. Yeah, you have to do it preemptively. Yeah. That's why they have to make sure when they play the footies, they can't just go back and forth. They just have to crouch every once in a while. If you, oh, level ones are so fast in this game. Level yeah. one supers will catch you so fast. 
In fact, if you activate it like right next to them and they're not blocking, you just oh, it's the automatic yeah, hit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, even level one. Even level one. Oh, look at that! Oh, clean punish. Look at the damage. <laughs> James, are you sure? <laughs> is this supposed to be like this? Yeah, I know. We put the settings in the wrong. Game. Yeah. No, no. This oh, is a, clean this uppercut. This is a high damage game for sure. Oh, there's the vice. See, but he missed the uppercut. Yeah, I think he could combo off it, but still. 50% oh, on that. It, it's tricky too because even when you activate the custom combo and start doing it, there's actually these weird input glitches on it, so you actually have to be extra precise. You sound like you wrote the game uh, <laughs> FAQ on this, James. <laughs> oh, there's that alpha. Just how far that reach? Yeah. And alpha counters kill. Exactly right. That's yeah. one thing. In, in some other games <laughs> where they have alpha counters or, th or things like it, it doesn't kill you, but yeah. Unforgiving. Yes, exactly. And you know, it, it, it actually made it really hard too, because there are some matches where if you don't have any meter or if they just have a full bar and you have a tiny chunk, there's like almost nothing you can do. Right, because the alpha counter is going to come out anyway, and yeah. you're like, well. And it, it's not like in Street Fighter Five where the alpha counter has that startup that you can land and throw. These yeah. alpha counters are super fast. Yeah, blisteringly quick. And the only thing that can beat it usually is just an uppercut. So. Is he by rolling back? Any back tricky approach Lento. options for Lento Punish? Yeah, yeah Lento is really good because of the tricky movement and that crouching fierce is just such a good, such a good poking tool. Yeah, it has super far range too. It's really fast. It kind of snaps back real quick. All the moves that you know these older Street Fighter games always lot faster. It feels like. Oh, oh jump fight! Oh, get the punish! Oh man! Yeah, sets him up with a knife to try to walk in after, but. I'm battling back really well. Oh, this is a punish on the uppercut, too. Oh, you know what? I wonder if he was used to Alpha 3. Valento and Alpha 3 goes a lot farther forward. Yeah, he keeps messing it up. He's like, shoot, what am I supposed to do with you? Oh, and a trade on the uppercut. John, match point already. Could be a 3-0 real know. quick. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's actually maybe an advantage that John hasn't been playing like Street Fighter V as much because, you know, Vi might have these kind of like Street Fighter V habits right now. Well, Vi is one of those Street Fighter V players, huh? <laughs> exactly. Clean air to air from John. And he's got so much bar, too. Yeah, that kick off the counter can be punished with a frame-perfect reversal. Down to knife, setting him up over and over. Yeah, that was such a problem. He was so good at zoning the characters like Sandy with that knife. He's kind of a really annoying angle. Oh, okay, there we go. Vi taking that round. Yeah, I like that once he had the lead, he didn't press too much, right? He like backed up and was like, all right, let me just wait this out. Of course, you're going to activate a custom combo at any level, but the higher level you have, the more invincibility you have, the longer it lasts. There's nothing nice clean throw after John. Choice been going for a lot. Of oh, look at that! Poor Jeff Short Super! So much damage! The level threes, they hurt so And bad. the back throw, not quite enough to kill. Oh, oh the air to air. And la just like that, John Choi taking it 3 0. -oh. It's like he's never stopped playing this game. <laughs> <laughs> he makes it look like it. All right, so that was uh, that was a quick one. Yeah, so that was Alpha 2. Now, the interesting thing is we have Street Fighter Alpha 2, we have Street Fighter Alpha 3. Right. So you're like, okay, it's a sequel. So it must be pretty similar, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot find two games that are more different than these two games that are, you know, next to each other. In fact, Alpha 3 might be one of the most non-Street Fighter Street Fighter games that exist. And uh, you'll see it right now. There's going to be a lot of air recovering, flipping in the air. You're going to almost yeah. kind of see where... Like the anime games came from, you know, like Guilty Gear and everything, where you could flip in the air. A lot of it seemed to have kind of originated from Alpha 3. Yeah, Akuma for uh, Vi. Sakura here for John. Yeah, Sakura super powerful because the standard roundhouse is a great poking too and back heavy punch. So in Vism, you can control whether you do close up or far moves by holding back or neutral. And having access to Sakura's back, you know, the close up fierce punch is so useful because it's so fast. And it reaches far. So, like, what in this a position like this? What do you think Vi is looking for? Uh, he's just looking for the right opportunity right now to get in there and just start catching him with the unblockable Vism, or maybe sweep him and go for the boss combo if he can actually do that. Where there's a glitch in Vism where you can throw people off the ground with command throws. And so, oh, oh no, he's just going for the regular one. Oh, he's still got it. There we go. Uppercut. No, oh. he missed the upper, he missed the juggles. Yeah, I didn't get the end, but that was still a lot of damage. Yeah. But you can see right now, not very much time. Vi probably going to try to, well, he has the lead, but he's probably going to try to build some meter. You can do the by whipping throws. That's a, usually a common way to build meter. Yeah, I love jump over Tatsu to just get out of the corner. Yeah. Run away, so much mobility. 
And keep in mind too, when uh, Mai won the Alpha 3 National Championship uh, long ago, and they flew out the Alpha 3 National Championship the champion from Japan. Mm -hmm. It was some young upstart kid named Daigo Umahara. Yeah, one of the most famous matches to ever <laughs> happen, right, in all the fighting games. Exactly. Yeah, oh. you, you talk about these two playing each other in famous matches. That is yeah. uh, another person that they could uh, play a lot of fighting games. Oh, yep. You can still cancel the delay of the fireball into the uppercut in the custom combo. Yeah, it's so powerful. Yeah, you see him whipping those throws again, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. to get the bar. If you want to learn all about the systems of Alpha 3, you can go to GameFAQs.com. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about GameFAQs. <laughs> Find my systems guide over there. Is it still up? <laughs> it's still there. To this day? It's still there, yep. Do you have it printed somewhere? It's like 100 pages. I have it saved somewhere on my hard drive. <laughs> on a floppy, on a 3.5. On a floppy, floppy disk? Yeah. Don't ever say that again. <laughs> Fine. Fine, just playing so defensively, right? Yeah. And you know, one of the dangerous things about this is that guard meter. This is one of the first Street Fighter games that ever introduced the guard meter, and it drains fast, too. Yeah. And having access to the heavy buttons can be a problem. And v -isms, the v -ism, uh, ism you can see the, the bars are blue on the bottom. There's also the x -ism, which is red, and the A-ism, which is green. But Vism has the shortest guard bar. Oh, look at that. Yeah, and that's going to do it. Even even if it didn't kill, there was zero <laughs> seconds left. You're just going to run away. Vi, game one, nice and convincing. Yeah. So here we go. Vi on the board now. Of course, John is technically up 1-0 because he won right. Alpha 2. But here in this game, Vi is up, uh, is that 1-0? Yeah, 1-0. 1-0, yeah. Here, Vi. So funny to watch Vi play this defensive. Careful, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's not his usual place though. Yeah, I mean that's kind of the thing that you have to do against the crew because of the standing heavy kick and the stand and the back fierce punch. That thing right there. But John missed the timing, so Lai is gonna take advantage of that and do as much damage as possible. Missed the demon flip. Of yeah. course the demon flip in this game is still tiger D motion. It's oh, not is actually it? a DP motion, yeah. yeah okay. So that's why you see people mess that up a lot. It's funny you say tiger knee and not a DP motion. <laughs> 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 Unlike modern games, right? It's his own input. The worst thing about it is like Tiger D actually is a DP now. Yeah, it is the DP <laughs> motion now, which is okay. That <laughs> right. standing around is so good so far. And also the jumping light kick from Sakura is so good. It just lasts for most of her jump, reaches super far. Yeah, it's one thing you tend to see in all the Street Fighter games, right? Is buttons that, yeah, counter activation. And you know what? When you play Vism, Vism, and Alpha 3, it is a lot of game of chicken. Yeah. It's like you're really just tempting whoever to, to, to activate the Vism first. And then you just do it right back in. Yeah. It's like, well, I'm second, so my invincibility is going to take a little bit longer to uh, run out, and you're just chilling. Yeah, one of the nice things about Vism is it's just two buttons, right? Yeah. And it, it changes how quickly your shadow attacks after you, and it changes how a lot of your combos work. But because the activation requires no extra inputs, you can just kind of mash that. Yeah, know, right? exactly. So you'll actually see people use it a lot as anti-air, as an anti-anti-air. Yeah, right. You <laughs> jump in and someone tries to anti-air something, activate in the air, mm -hmm. land full combo punish. You thought jump-ins were good in some other games. Oh, there's that back heavy punch. Oh, the classic. Launch him into the air. So this is one of the first Street Fighter games that introduce counter hits as well. Mm. And the heavy buttons, when they counter hit, they will pop the opponent up into the air. And so John noticed that and then chased after him after he flipped and got the air throw. Every character in this game has an air throw. Yeah, and you saw Vi try to use the activation to go through the fireball that John threw earlier. Just a little too far away. Oh, uppercut's out of there. Vi has a slight life lead now, but only 15 seconds left on the clock. Yeah. Oh, oh. wait, he delayed that. Yeah, he jump in, wait, activate to try to catch the counter poke, and he was hitting a button. Nice. Alex Vi. Dive kicks, man. Dive. This dive kick is so fast, it's, too. Yeah. Like, hmm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it doesn't cause a big hit stun, so it's hard to, to properly combo off of, and the window to do the dive kick is a little small, yeah. but it, like you said, it's so fast. And also, if you jump over with it and go to the other side, like, what are you going to do? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's so quick. Exactly. It's like, okay. Yeah, 2 0 Vi. It's so funny. It's, they were just talking about this up there. They're like, yeah, when we play, you know, Alpha 2, it's going to go like this. We play Alpha 3, it's going to go like this. So we're going to have to settle in an ST. <laughs> is going to be interesting because uh, 
probably going to be a Ryu and old Sagat match. Mm, yeah. It's the classic Vi Choi matchup. Oh, look at the damage. A lot of yeah. damage, yeah. And Sakura is scary. Just one with that. pops you, hits you with the uppercut after. You know, the, look at the guard bar, though. Oh, oh man. Yeah, and now it's scary time here because he's just got to deal with that. Oh, so he activates the custom. He tried to set up an unblockable. So you throw those red fireballs and you have to block that. And then also you come in with a demon flip and then into like a low. Mm -hmm. And so it becomes a high low at the same time. It becomes like a hard to blockable, basically. Right. Yeah, and Vi was looking to set it up. Didn't get the demon flip again, though. These <laughs> <laughs> pesky tiger knees. Oh. oh, no, he rolled by accident. Yeah, he had the activation and everything. Yeah, and yes, Akuma had a little roll in Alpha 3. Yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sakura has a roll, too, right? No. Does she know? Well, they have the recovery roll. The recovery so, yeah, roll. Yeah, uh, but Akuma is like uh, Alpha Ken. He could just like choose the roll like CBS 2. Of know? course, yeah. Yeah. Akuma's never not had everything. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, look at that Danger, guard game. Yeah. yeah. And, the, and you know what's brutal about it, too, is when you do get your guard broken, that meter shortens. It breaks a chunk off of it, so it becomes easier to guard break you again. Yeah, very, extremely unforgiving. <laughs> you know what would be great is if everything got worse. <laughs> yeah, your exactly. life just got harder. Wow, Ooh, that's nice great. Nice combo, yeah. Yeah, but you, basically the opponent can flip every time your character reaches a neutral state, and there's a way if you land through the jump, you cancel your landing frames into a special, and you don't reach a neutral, so that will combo. Oh, oh. just the chip! Look at this cheap. Yeah, cheap, yeah, a cheap, cheap kill. <laughs> exactly. You even get a little C on there on your little victory symbol up there. Yeah, I think they still technically call it a cheap kill in most oh, yeah. games, right? Yeah. <laughs> The C's up there. No, the best is in Alpha 2. It's actually when you win by chip damage, it's actually a block of cheese. Oh, you just cheese them out? Yeah. That's why they had to remove it. <laughs> chip damage was too good. <laughs> you can't chip kill anymore. Oh, no uppercut. So let's jump back fireballs again from Vine. Yeah, corner early, but there's so many mobility options to escape, right? One of the interesting things I've noticed that Vi hasn't really been using Akuma's back heavy kick. That axe kick that the Shotos have is really, really good. And, you know, I think they can cure us, right? So I don't know if I do. You're just telling yeah, them? I know, right? Remember you have back heavy kick as Vi, well? use back heavy kick! <laughs> Coaching? James, you're back. Right? Let's go SoCal! No. Yeah, counter hit by the fireball, popped out, another air fireball. <laughs> I mean, that was actually, you know, the B3 match that I talked about that I referred to, you know. That was one of the things about that. That was one of the first NorCal, SoCal big rivalries. Everyone had talked about how good Choi was and how Vi wa good Vi was. You know, and the fact that it actually went all the way down to, like, the last game, last round, pretty much. Like, it's pretty, uh... We bragged about it as SoCal as we won anyway, but yeah, you know, it, was, <laughs> it was pretty close, so we, we called it definitive at the time. Yeah, definitive match. Yeah, last <laughs> yeah. game, last round, it was a beating. <laughs> yeah, no chance. Yeah. And the crazy thing is, no one knew about that by ICC, and that's when he kind of debuted it. Right? Oh, okay. And the best thing about it was, like I said, nobody knew about it. Choi started using it back on him, like right there. He was like, "This, I, I think this is how you do it." And yeah, he and he just doing, immediately figured yeah, it out. Yeah, he just started doing it back at him, and so Vi had to counter adjust all of a sudden. Yeah, the beauty of fighting games, right? Uh, it was so beautiful. You figure out some dangerous tactic, and your opponent's like, "That seems pretty good." Yeah, <laughs> I think I could do that too. Uh, I'm gonna do that as well. So. As Vi is on match point here for Alpha Three, We're looking to try to settle things in ST. Fireball. Yeah, he flipped all flip, the yeah. way up to the ceiling. He's like, hey, yeah, later, bro. Yeah, you can flip the three. Oh, yeah, he committed to a button. Choice. So that's the dangerous thing. So you have, like I said, you can't get to neutral. So he has to do the uppercut land. And you, depending on the height of Akuma, you have to do a different uppercut. Mm, okay. So that you have more delay when you land because you can cancel the delay into something else. So they oh, can't my flip. gosh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, guard bar still in a pretty precarious spot. Mm -hmm. This choice running out of life here. Yeah, and time as well. Oh, the empty jump. Let's go. Jump short. Cross oh, up. Yeah. Oh, oh and, and he, he gets got the, the dizzy. stun into death right there. And, you know, the damage does seem a little high, and Vism does less damage than the other ism. Xism is, like, the most damaging one. Aism is, like, second. This is the least damaging? This is the least damaging one, yeah. Ooh. Oh, nice. Yeah, that was a clean jump in. Back and yeah, the danger, and he gets the stun again. Oh, Choi missed that jump, uh, missed the jump in. Yeah, I didn't get the jump in. Activate from Vi. Yeah, here we go. The unblock. We'll see right there, though. Demon flip into the low that he had right there. Yeah, counter activation from John. Didn't get too much out of it. 
jumping. I cannot believe that reach. So right, that I told you that jumping the light, light kick, kick yeah. is, is ridiculous. It's silly. Uh -oh. Yeah, Vine had good corner positioning, but I like that he backed off the jump in. I wonder if Choi thought he was too far. The back fierce back can't miss. might not have reached, yeah. yeah. He can't miss in that range. Yeah, jump fireball to try to space him out. And you can see Vi pumping. Oh, he made it in, and look at this. Choi has tied it up. Two to two. Two apiece? Yo, Choi is like, no, no, no. We're not settling this in ST. It's yeah, he doesn't want to settle gonna in ST. It's going to be a foregone conclusion. He's going to sweep them all three games? Oh, yo. That would be great. <laughs> <laughs> That's the favorite thing about fighting game uh, players. If you ask them about sets that they've had, it doesn't matter how long ago it is. They'll always be, like, if they lose it, they'll be like, I should have won that. <laughs> like, you know what happened? And you know you know a person is really into fighting games when you talk to them and they can remember matches from, like, 10 years ago. Yeah, down to the pixel, right? Like, you know what happened is I tried to counter-activate right there and I didn't get in and then Vime oh. dropped his combo. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Vime missed the stand fierce. You just have to go juggle, stand fierce, and the whiff fireball. Fierce and the whiff fireball, et cetera, et cetera. And bypass those neutral states again. Ooh, a counter hit round. Huh? Oh, again. But he didn't get the combo that time. Yeah, I didn't like the back fierce. Whoa, that was a sick whip punish. <laughs> it was ridiculous. <laughs> I feel like it was a comic book strip, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, but he's going to get the... That is the classic Sakura combo. Low shirt, low shirt, tan short, uppercut. Yeah. That is the classic, and he's going to get it again. Look at this. John Choi is going to take a lead if he can take this round. Yeah, scary position now, Vi. No health to mess with. Oh, Chip's a big problem. Jumps back. Oh. Activates. Okay, he's going for the unblockable. Yeah, he's gonna try yeah, to set it is. up here. Did he get, oh no, he missed the, the combo. Again. But you know what, he's so close right now. You gotta watch the activation from John though. Yeah. That's so much meter. Oh, oh, if he had activated in the air, if he had activated that meter. He would've just it. flown through it. Yeah, exactly. But oh, no, man. now Vaya back at match point. Yeah, match point Vaya here. Okay, classic anti-air right there. Fireball knocking down into the corner. Yeah, pushing him back here. Oh, John already lost a lot of life, but full gauge to work with. And that fall round. Yeah, what a beautiful a, button. It's one of the greatest uh, footsies button ever. And you know who's the master of that button? Ricky. Ricky Ortiz, of yeah. course. In CBS 2 especially, he abused that move. Jump back fireball again. Man, Vi just sitting so comfortable. It's so funny to watch him play this playstyle. <laughs> Instead of the RTSD yeah, that we know him he's for. He's so aggressive. All right, well, look at this Vi with a pretty decent life lead here. Oh, Lands the sweep. sweep. Empty jump short again. Oh, activate. Th yeah, Ooh, again, he's trying to make it yeah. through the fireball a little too far. But he still got the hit because of the unblockable. Does he get it? Yes, there we go. Got the juggle there. So you saw now you see John Choi down to almost no health. Yeah. Tons of gauge. Activate. Oh, Ooh. the DP from Vi. He Kara canceled that on startup. He knew he was in trouble, yeah. right? He saw the activation and was, he was all in. He's like, might as well try. Four seconds oh, left on the clock. Oh, the autocorrect. Alex Vi with four seconds left on the clock takes it. And so, yes, we are tied one to one in games now. There was four seconds left, and he was like, yeah, let me just autocorrect DP. <laughs> but no, he didn't have to do any of that. He was right. like, yeah, he could have just waited it out. Blocked to be safe, but no, no, that's not, that's not the way Alex does things. Yeah, that's not Alex Vi. <laughs> But we're gonna settle in an ST like they talked about. Yeah, and you know what? This is gonna you you wanna you wanna talk fast? Oh yeah, this is gonna be quick. <laughs> First of three, I hope you guys are ready for five minutes of yeah, I know, right? of ST action. And the cool thing about it too is that uh, John Choi just got third place this weekend at Evo in Super Turbo with old Sagat. Yeah, he played in the side tournament, right? Mm -hmm. Cool to see Alex Vi locks in. He's oh, been playing a lot. Old Ryu. old Ryu. Yeah, he's been playing this a lot at uh, WNA. Yeah. He's been entering the tournaments because obviously That's Tournament of Legends right. going down. There's so much going on for the 30th anniversary. That's really interesting to me. I'm actually not 100% sure why he's going with old Ryu. He just tried the 50% um, the chance unblockable air Tatsu. Oh, yeah, the jump Tatsu, yeah. <laughs> But of course, old Sagat, the reason why he's so scary is because he's a machine gun. Remember, yes. John Choi won Evo with this character one year. Oh, trying to get the chip. The same year that he won CBS 2. He's one of the only two time, two, two a game winners in a single Evo in history. Which year was that? I think it was 2008. 2008. And you know what's crazy is Vi got such a huge lead early. And you really have to do that against Old Cigar, right? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you saw exactly what happened. Oh, he's going to get the jump in and the three-hit combo here. Not quite stunned yet. Yeah, the Dizzy is so huge, though, right? Clean uppercut. Ooh, okay, that actually is a stun as well. 
I think Vi was trying to go for the throw. Remember, throws are one button. In, in Alpha 2 and Alpha N this game, it's one button. Alpha 3, it's two punches and two kicks. Yeah, clean oh. uppercut. That's so much damage to E. And then the meaty fireball to knock him back after, throwing the high tiger. And I'm going to tell you something right now. Nothing good is good in an uppercut. In this turtle. game, yeah, yeah. It feels it so good. It feels like it Because you have to input it like an adult, right? That's the thing. <laughs> oh, that was a great trade in oh, John. Oh, man. Okay. Still got some fight left in him, of course. Yeah, tr trying to start with that uh, sweep right at the start. Now, just so people know, I mean, they're supposed to have super meters under there, you know, at, at the bottom, just right. like uh, the, the other games. But the thing about it, since they're using the old, quote, old versions, you have to input as code when you pick them. You end up with no super, you can't tech throws, but you gain some benefits, certain benefits. Yeah, and some old characters, you know, are better than the young. It just depends on which one. Oh, the dizzy! What? And just raw uppercut. It's funny because a lot of times, you know, in new games, like if you can kill him with a throw, you'll just do that. But yeah. you can tech a throw while you're, while you're dizzy. Were you dizzy? Yeah. <laughs> Did he get the Sagako? I didn't hear it. Yeah, I didn't I hear it. Yeah, I didn't hear oh, it. Yeah, he, oh, he got it. He got it. Okay. He's, he's <laughs> way ahead of us. Yep. By backing up our earlier fireballs, but yeah, as you mentioned, the machine gun. Look at look at Sagat go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he says Tiger, and he throws it. It's so fast. The recovery is incredible. Yeah, there are some characters who can actually jump when Sagat throws the tiger, and he'll still uppercut you. Yeah, it's exactly. Crazy. And there are like frame There are like situations where you jump a little tiger, and the high tiger shot hits you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh, I'll make it over, no problem, and then you're just like, oh. And those, that jump roundhouse from Sagat, that leg, it's very similar to that Sakura jump short, except it's a roundhouse. So. Yeah, and he has stand light kick, and this game is fantastic. Ooh, oh, oh! the jump attack timing. That killed him? Yes. <laughs> and actually, you know what? That's actually true. So when you tech throw, you reduce the damage, right? But the way the game calculates it, it'll kill you first, and then give you your health back, and so... Die. Yeah, you're just dead. Yeah, you just die. You, you don't rise up as zombie here. Really. You can't actually take a throw if it's gonna kill you. Basically. Oh, Tatsu gets a throw after. This is huge for Vi. Oh, that's right, but they're also both these old characters that can't take I love that he walked up and then walked back. And Choi tried to sweep and he just got the fireball. That's like some. That's classic Street Fighter. And he just anti-air uh, Choi. Oh, what a jump timing! And we are tied one to one. And that's the best thing, right? Is like when you hit somebody with a fireball and then you jump. Because they're like, oh, hear me? I'm going to throw a fireball <laughs> yeah. right back at you. It's that revenge fireball. <laughs> yeah, you feel it in your heart. Mm -hmm. Oops, I don't think Troy meant to play Bison. No, I definitely do not want to play Bison. Split game, ST. And guess what? We're right back into it. <laughs> yep. It's beautiful to how fast it is. And like I said, I'm interested in the guy who is choosing old gear. I mean, he has a more invincible uppercut. Mm, okay. The uppercut is actually invincible all the way to the top. But I really haven't seen that come into play too much. Like a mini tiger shot situation or something? Well, maybe just because Sagat's jump roundhouse is so far. Oh, the, oh that God. was a huge jump over, yeah. No stun? Oh my God. Yeah, I'm super surprised. Although the game, you know, it depends on how it's feeling. Yeah, yeah actually, that's what, that's a really key point. Because ST has a lot of randomness in it. Yeah. The damage, the window of, of, of how long you can be thrown when you get up, etc. There's so many little random factors in there. Yeah, the guess just decide if the game's going to be nice to you that, that day or not, right? Mm -hmm. Or cruel, depending on how you're looking at it. <laughs> just like that weird unblockable air tattoo I was talking about. That's 50, there's a 50% chance. It's just random. Basically. Yeah. So really, when you say good block, it's like, well... <laughs> Thanks, uh, thanks to the CPU. Yeah, you're really just guessing. Well, Tazu uppercut. Didn't catch the sweep that John stuck out. Oh, man. Nice again. Oh, he tried to go in there oh. and get a throw. But look at this Vi now going up 2-1. He's one game away from taking this exhibition over John Choi. Yeah, and it was that trade off the sweep, right? Barely lived. <laughs> he had like a pixel of life. I mean, that's the thing about SC that's so great, right? It's such a fast-paced game. You just get back into it immediately, right? It's a game that's unforgiving and brutal, but also it gives you another chance. And, and also, it's a very emotional game. A lot of times you see, like, why did he decide to do this? Because he felt like it. And that's, like, literally the logical reason why. Oh, the uppercut beat the Tatsu? Oh, my God. 
god, on the other side as well. Yeah. Clean uppercut. You see the damage on the uppercut there? That is so hard because this guy is so tall. Oh. You need to kick him while he's trying to do the uppercut motion, and yep, there's nothing you can do about that. You had no health. Yeah. And he just uppercut all the way up. Yep. And like I said, low to you, it's going to be invincible literally all the way until he's Set point, Alex by throwing the corner here, jump on to oh, another one. Another one? Again? Oh no! Oh, no. Oh, oh, that was boy. DP chip out. Oh god, here comes John Choi. John Choi Sagat barely living here. Jump over. Oh, see how he can recover? Oh, oh the point blank fireball from Mai is gonna take it over John Choi. Cali Power himself stays in it, gets the job done. That was sick. I'm glad that it came down to the last yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. And you see how the, the, the domination by SoCal? No, it's kidding. The domination? <laughs> what did you mean, the domination? <laughs> Oh, man, but good stuff to Al. And actually, good stuff to John Choi. Shout out to both of these guys for coming out and playing in this exhibition here. These are, like, l two of the biggest rivals for the longest of time, and, and they've been playing each other in so many games. Yeah, legendary Street Fighter players, right? Yeah. That's the cool thing about both of them, for mm -hmm. sure, right, is that they've competed in so many different titles across so many different games. They've yeah. left their marks on, like, so many different communities even, right? They've been so good at a lot of games, and not even just the Street Fighter titles over the year. Right, and, and it's funny too, because I, I guess I'll just tell a little story here that like they were rivals for the longest of time until they both had to travel to the Midwest and they got like stranded in Arizona, I think oh, it no. was. And they just like had to hang out and they just started talking. They're like, this guy's pretty cool. And yeah, he's, he's not that bad. And they all went to the Midwest and they bodied the Midwest. <laughs> you know, James, some stories, they sound very familiar. <laughs> Exactly. Things never, some things don't change. Right? Oh, I heard a big oh. boo from the crowd. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Midwest yeah. FGC was not happy about that, James. How <laughs> dare you? <laughs> yeah, but uh, the cool thing about it is both of these guys continue to do FGC stuff. So we have Southern California Regionals, SCR, which is run, of course, by Vi's uh, team company, the Level Up, uh, Level Up Productions. Right. And then NCR, N North Cal Regionals, North Cal Regionals, run by... John Choi. Exactly. And both of them have those events every single year. Mm -hmm. And so they're two of the, the, you know, the main events that everybody wants to travel out exactly. to each and every year. They're such, they're like uh, milestones each mm -hmm. year that you have mm -hmm. to hit, right? You have to make it out to NCR. You have to make it out to SCR. They're such important events to the community. And those two are running them because, you know, they've played all, a long time. Right. <laughs> and exactly. sort of now it's their time to host these events and foster a lot of the players coming up. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that they can't step in and throw some fireballs. If they <laughs> exactly. Have to. Well, let's go down to John Choi and see what he has to say about that exhibition. Thanks, guys. Yes, I'm here with Choi. Awesome exhibition. And first things first, it's 2018. Being able to play these games in an arena like this, how does it feel? And what do you think about where we are today compared to where we've started? Oh, I think this is a tremendous opportunity, and it feels great to be here. Um, it's actually extra interesting because the first time I met Alex was in Vegas about 25 years ago, right around here. Um, we played off in Alpha 1 and then after that we had many battles over many iterations and I'm just glad that after all these years we could still keep up doing what we love and watching the scene grow to something like this and it's been a tremendous joy to like participate in something like this with everybody here. Yes, give it up. Amazing exhibition. How do you feel about the rivalry here, even you know in 2018? It's great. I mean, we, it first started as a rivalry, and then it blossomed into a respect, and then ultimately a friendship. We used to travel together. We went to a lot of events, and like I said, I'm glad that we're stable to have this rivalry. But yet, it's you know it's all love and having a good time doing this. So. I'm just thankful for everything. Awesome. Well, thank you so much and really enjoyed watching you play. We are also going to get an interview in with Valle, but thanks so much. Another round of applause for Joy, please. Thank you. Thank you. And of course, we have Valle stepping up now, a man that needs no introduction, but how does it feel? I mean, I'm going to ask you the same question because it's always nice to see different games taking the main stage for once instead of what's new and what's popping. So how do you feel about the 30th anniversary collection and what it means for the community of these games? Such a loaded question, you know what I mean? Um, 
I mean, I was in awe when I heard Capcom was going to release 30th anniversary with all the games. It's kind of like, now let's, let's play my games, the games that I grew up with. All the foundations of Street Fighter and every fighting game came out of that, okay? So I did what I can. You know, I, do, I always push the limit in including the community to everything I do. With 30th anniversary, any generation can pick it up. You can relearn it. And you'll still watch rivalries like this happen. And you just went toe-to-toe -to -toe against an amazing competitor in multiple games. What kind of advice can you give to people out there competing in multiple games? And how do you go about you know, tackling that battle? So many different engines and different things to learn. How do you incorporate that? Uh, I mean, it, it's, it's hard now in, in the modern gaming world is because I mean, we had 100 players, 128-man tournaments that we called majors. We have 10,000 competitors at EVO. Um, it's, it's really hard to uh, focus on more than like two games. You know, it's really hard because everybody's so good nowadays. The information is out there. So if you want to learn mini games, I encourage you to. Um, just to take like every system mechanic, every styles of play, because when a new version of your favorite game comes out, I guarantee you, you'll be ahead of the curve. Awesome. And, you know, just to find out a little bit more of history from you, of all the Street Fighter games out, and also within the 30th anniversary collection, what's your favorite memory from any game? Your choice. Now the loaded question. Um, Got to keep you on your toes. I'm going to say I've had, I, I just can't narrow it down to one. Uh, I'm going to say my meeting with Mike Watson, my meeting with John Choi here in Vegas when I was barely allowed to leave Circus Circus, <laughs> my meeting with Daigo Umahara, and my meeting with Justin Wong. All you guys, all you legends taught me so much in the game and you guys are teaching the future, so let's keep it up, and let's keep the dream alive.